like the rest of them because today I am on location in Norval Outdoor School. The sign says it all itself. Welcome to the coolest school on earth. Welcome to Norval. Norval. It's part of the soul of our school. It's where we go to enjoy nature and learn the values of friendship and teamwork and of course to have fun. And let me tell you, we love it. Now, you're probably wondering, what is Norval Outdoor School? So Norval Outdoor School is a separate outdoor campus of Upper Canada College in Toronto and they're very kind to let other schools use it as well but they also have an amazing cooking facility and the chef here has been kind enough to let me film a video cooking one of my classics which is the game day chili but with a twist. So, with no further ado, let's get into the here's what you're going to need. So, you are going to need four minimum cloves of garlic, three peppers, some green onions or normal onions, a carrot, olive oil, cocoa powder, black beans, pinto beans, tomato paste, uh, red kidney beans, oregano, cumin, chili powder, and black pepper. And then you're also going to need one pound of lean ground beef, some sea salt, and diced or crushed tomatoes. So this is game day chili, but it's game day chili with a twist, a Norval themed twist. So my teacher actually had the brilliant idea to well, come up with an ingredient slash garnish that I could put in the chili to make it a little more Norval themed. And so I was talking to my dad about this, and he said he thought he might have had an idea. So later that day, he went to a cheese shop, and he said to the man in the cheese shop, is there any ch uh, cheese, particularly of the cheddar family, that is from around the Halton Hills area, which is where we are right now? And the person in the cheese shop said, well, as a matter of fact, we do. And he brought out this cheese. It's called Five Brothers Cheese, and there's a short blurb, if you will. Oh, Five Brothers Cheese, made by Guns Hill in Woodstock, Ontario. A firm, handmade cheese produced with Swiss techniques. Flavorful, nutty, with pronounced nutty and fruity notes. Now, I think this is all true, and I think it'll be even more so when it's put on chili. Alright, so this is step one, and it is stir the spices, which are chili powder, cumin, cocoa powder, oregano, pepper, and salt into a small bowl, then set them aside for later. Now, a very warm welcome to Miss Dietrich, the head chef at Norville, who volunteered to answer some questions in an interview. I've had a, an amazing opportunity to ask a few questions in a short interview with Norval's head chef, Miss Dietrich. So we're going to just ask her a few questions. And the first question is, what inspired you to cook? What inspired me to cook was, at the age of eight, my dad taught me how to make scrambled eggs. And with all the wonderful seasonings that he put in it, and tasting it, it was, it was amazing. It was eye-opener for me. And um, my desire to cook and want to experiment and explore different flavors just took off at a young age. All right, so question number two. How long have you been at Norval as a chef? I've been at Norval as a chef for 16 years. Wow. 
Huh? All right, question number three. What is the absolute weirdest thing you've ever cooked at Marvel? <laughs> the weirdest thing I've ever cooked at Marvel was a Halloween theme, and that is chicken foot. And it is, what I said, it, it is the foot of the chicken. And I made soup with it. <laughs> wow, that is pretty weird, and I know, I mean, I've never heard of it, but I think it would be quite delicious. Any part of the chicken is a good part of the chicken. Yeah. So, question number four. When did you first learn about Norval? I first learned about Norval in, I would say, 2004, when I was working at the upper school. A colleague of mine spoke about Norval, and I didn't know what Norval was, and they explained to me about Norval, how it is an outdoor education center. And from there, I learned about Norval. Wow. Yeah. All right, so question number five, and this is probably the biggest question. Is there any food that you think is particularly associated with Norval in terms of it being ingredients, etc.? Oh, most definitely. I would say pancakes, maple syrup. We, we have maple syrup on the property. Um, bacon. <laughs> Cinnamon buns, I would have to say that's the biggest. <laughs> I mean, yeah. say, definitely, yeah. definitely the maple syrup. Yes. And so... Question number six. If you have a class of 23 people who are all very hungry from doing who knows what, they come in. How do you like, multiply the portions to make them big enough to serve 23 people? Excellent question. Um, we use different pans. We use hotel pans. We use two inch pans and four inch pans. And I know that a two inch pan lasagna um, will give me a full two-inch pan will, will feed 25 students. And I, I, I normally, with a group of 30 students, I know we would need technically a 5 kg of, of protein to feed them as well. So whether it's I'm doing a meat sauce or a chicken breast, right? So I know um, what it takes to feed some hungry boys and have a little bit of leftovers as well. I will say I've made lasagna and it had one pound of beef in it. So I couldn't imagine wrangling five kilograms of beef to make it So, Dietrich, thank you so much for sitting down and answering a few questions for us. You're so welcome, Daniel. It's my pleasure. All right, there you go. This is a one, right? Use your body. Yeah, there you go. There you go. You got it. All right, so now you may be wondering what this ominous looking murder weapon is. And if you think it is a murder weapon, you're right. Just not for humans, for cans. This is a can opener, probably one of the coolest can openers I've ever seen. Um, I'm gonna refer to it as a can guillotine for reasons that will now be explained. Basically, this is how it works. Sharp little part, as on all can, uh, can openers. But what you do is, because this thing is quite heavy, if you, for example, go and drop it. After a little while, you'll form a hole. And then you can start to open the can. And I think the can opener may be one of the most frustrating items in the domestic kitchen. And this has solved the problem, the, the age old problem with the can opener not can open. So that's probably the quickest time I've ever opened a can. Ah yes, beans. The main ingredient in the wonderful three bean show. An ingredient full of fiber. A song that will not be named now as it is famous in all parts of the world has to be sung every time you wash your beans for your game day toy for a prosperous meal. As the song itself is too sacred to be sung at such an occasion, I will give you simply a quick rendition. Oh, beans, beans, the magical fruit. The more you eat, the more you toot. The more you toot, the better you feel. So eat your beans at every meal. Okay, so now we're getting into the real deal. We're going to start actually cooking the ingredients. So, once you turn on the 
burner, you want to pour two tablespoons of olive oil in. Okay, so now in go the vegetables, which will now saute until very soft for about 8 to 10 minutes on medium high heat. That is so serious flame making. All right, it goes to beef. Then put that up in small pieces. Then add the spices. You can add in spices now. Then break down the beef just a tiny bit today. Now I'm going to add in these diced tomatoes. You usually I just throw in a can of this. This time it's a little bit different. Lots of this. And tomato sauce. Whew a lot of tomato and then tomato paste. It's all tomatoes, tomatoes, tomatoes. Bubble, bubble, toil and trouble. Eye of newt, leg of spider, three bean medley. Okay, time to grate the five brothers cheese to sprinkle on to the chili. Wow, we're getting close to the end of this. Wait a minute now. I just cut the cheese. No, wait, I mean. Now, to eat. Now, wait a second now. Now, where's my chili? Where's my chili? I'll tell you. For my long time chef, Daniel, viewers, you may be used to one of my now to eats around this time of the video where the meal has been cooked and I shall now taste test it and say it's wonderful no matter what it tastes like. And this time it's going to be just a tiny bit different because it's not going to be me who's doing the now to eat. It's going to be my class who is with me at Norville and of course are really good candidates for some really good reviews but also candid camera as you will see. This is another this level. Is another level of awesomeness. This is good. Oh my god, this is so good. The chili has some kick to it. Now that's chili. You don't have any time. The best chili I've ever had. I'd say that's some pretty high praise. Oh my god, this is so good! This chili has some kick to it. Now that's chili. You don't have any content. The best chili I've ever had. This is good! That's a wrap! Thank you for watching. Now, a few credits before we go. Thank you so much for checking out the channel and this video in particular because it's been a real passion project for me. 
An absolutely huge thank you to my home forum teacher and cameraman, Mr. Cooper. Also, a huge thank you to Miss Dietrich and all the Norval staff for their hospitality, patience, and really good food. Big thank you also to my class as taste testers who were trusting enough to eat my handiwork and also say it was really good. And so, now, as we say it in this neck of the woods, this is Chef Daniel, signing off. And remember, if I can do it, you can do it. Thank you for watching. Wow, I figured it out my reverse time. I'm a wizard. Oh, boy. When I get the beats, you're attracted to the bullets and magic.